Okay, uh, John Dobson, ladies and gentlemen, and basically I believe he's a USA citizen and it doesn't really matter because he was in the United States during World War II and basically like he will state, and he's a very intelligent person and he's pretty much the inventor of the Dobson telescope. And basically I'm going to show you what you can see during the daylight hours with the Dobson telescope, the damn good telescope. Now, uh, this guy is very intelligent, great information to watch some of the videos on John Dobson on on YouTube, ladies and gentlemen, okay? Uh Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to see these shots because this guy invented pretty much, I believe, this telescope. And I'm retaping this because the idea that we've had a little fun with, I've been crapping on Kerasov pretty good, and the idea that I've got some great, great footage on, I'll redo this here in a minute, folks. And here, here we go again. I'm redoing this tape. And I think telescope's been around for a long time, ladies and gentlemen. Basically, this is Capella, okay? And then basically, I'm going to give you Vitagulus, and this is the daytime hours. And as you can see it flashing around, rotating more than who knows how fast around. Now, they also get a good look at Vitagulus here. And the idea that redoing this because basically they put uh, my, if anybody's seen that video that I put down, there was 18 people that went and looked at it. I'm going to put the same, all the texture to this thing and everything like that. But basically what they did is they went in and through a uh, video over top of my sound. So basically redoing this and basically you see that these flop and this is what you end up having over at the volcanoes over in Japan and then I'll give you some more footage of some stuff that I th put on here that they didn't really want you to know about either because I'm going to show you some stuff on infrared cameras. And basically this is Capella flopping around. Daytime sky folks. Daytime sky. You can pick this up with those telescopes. Okay. John Dobson, one of his Basically, I don't know if he gets the money off it or whoever does with making a Dobson telescope, but we've got to see Capella flopping around again. This is dramatic footage. Basically, it proves the idea that of what's going on over in Japan and all the other volcanoes, folks. As you see, that looks pretty wild, doesn't it? Okay, it's, it's a huge star way the hell out. And we know Pitagoras is huge, too, and you'll see it flopping around in the daytime sky. Okay, now he has to get a telescope to see this, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, I really don't think you would end up seeing it with a pair of binoculars. Okay, so very, that was Pythagoras, and Pythagoras is huge. Okay, Pythagoras is huge, ladies and gentlemen. That's Pythagoras, very far away too. Okay, so we now, folks, this is an infrared camera, and it's basically picking up the the cooling at night of a roof. Okay, and radii from Fuka Fudge up, and so forth, and basically your tiles, they get nasty bacteria on your roof. Okay protects you, basically keeps you on. But what this is, is basically bacteria and nuclear radii. Yes, nuclear radii, ladies and gentlemen, CPM and rats, basically being able to be seen with an infrared camera down here on Earth. Now, itchy site showed that orbs thing in, in Arizona a long time ago. People were freaking out, okay? Now, I'm not sure if that guy had an infrared camera that he was going around recording all those orbs, but as you watch this here footage here, it's going to be basically CPM and rats and bacteria that you will end up seeing doing their action that you will pick up with a security camera, folks, and on infrared, okay, that looks in the dark, okay? So when you're videotaping, if you got just the right light, even with a regular camera, they'll pick up those orbs that we saw. And basically, it's the, the heat of the sun all day long, the supergiants and everything like that, and then check that out. You see that? Nuclear radii or whatever, banging around, and, and that's what we end up ha being worried about with the idea of the scientists in Nevada and everything all over the world telling everybody that the the, the nuclear reactors and everything like that, if you get any kind of a little bit of a seepage, the radii will get in, okay? So basically retaping this because they didn't like me letting you know that you basically you, there is ways to be able to see radiation and CPM and so forth. Infrared, ladies and gentlemen. It's like an infrared heat camera, okay? Not everything, but it also is somewhat of this is bacteria also because it's the, the roof cooling off in the evening from all the heat during the day. And it could even happen in wintertime. It would happen just about any time because the, your roof will take in the heat. That's why you put solar panels like that on it. And then check this out. And then this crazy, see, an infrared camera. Pick this up. This is an infrared uh, 
flipping uh, security camera and you can get them and pay a decent price for a good quality one and you'll end up seeing activity like that folks okay and basically it just comes seeping out of the roof when it's cooling off in the evening from the heat of the day and then the camera ends up picking up all this action up okay you're not seeing fireflies you're not seeing anything like that you're not seeing space monkeys this is actual more than likely radiation that gets absorbed into the roof during the day CPMs rads cesium all the nasty cesium nasty stuff iodine and everything like that from buka fudge up and whatever because all that stuff stays in the air for 200 years we know that it has a life of way more than that okay so there you get to see all this stuff pretty crazy video camera action but that's what this stuff is so uh, give you more in a minute basically and try to get some of the what I was showing you up on I on because I gotta remember what I had in the video now good good news or whatever you, you want to look at it now we are dramatically all of a sudden getting to where we should normally be in the winter time as we are departing away from the Sun at a very rapid rate honestly too because the idea that if you've been paying attention to what I've been sharing you for updates and stuff like that it was pretty darn close to the nearest we ever get okay in the millions of miles and then we've got the data of the largest so I'm starting to wonder if they're screwing with the data because one IU is 94 point something million and then below an IU they've got it down as 91.6 or am I missing the two okay yeah yeah largest is 94 okay so we are starting to move away from the Sun now so we are starting to somewhat get back to somewhat of a normalcy so because that's what your turn is now and just remember like I was saying before pay attention to the light speed so here we go with the light speed light minutes okay it's how long it takes the, sun, the light of the Sun to get here to the earth okay and then so as I was showing you before now we are dramatically from the 8.196 okay because this is the closest ever we've ever been recorded and I'm starting to wonder if we got closer than this and they are not letting us know because we were pretty damn close and now BAM all of a sudden we were something like 8189 or something like that and now we're all of a sudden 8196 okay so we've hell of a moved away from the Sun just in the last few days folks okay so we got Jupiter, which I don't know why they're showing it so s small, because we know Jupiter is bigger than Venus. And then um, Moon. And then let's look what we got. And I'm looking at the very northernmost uh, night sky we can look at, and I'll see if I get Asgard on here. So here's all your constellations and stuff. You know, that's south down there. Okay, so so if you watch the video before this one, you'll watch that basically a little myth that the idea that Asgard didn't show us the distance on uh, last night's stuff. So this is what we have currently at some of the Canadian Asgard sites and basically hopefully we don't have any playing problems in here and I'll plop through them real fast. Nothing there really. There's a shot. No, that's clouds too folks. So that's the moon down there. Now as you see some of these are shooting different directions so as you gotta watch the needle and arrow presents points north Okay, so north is this way, so the moon's down there on that shot, because just where the camera is positioned and they feeds it into these Canadian ones, okay? Uh, and then we'll go look over here. So, and then north is that way. So, we've got also this one here but I think this is one there's gonna be one that's a little annoying because it basically does have a street light possibly in the way but no it doesn't that's not a street light folks so more than likely that's the effect that you're seeing of more than likely the moon coming up but then again that's not really true because the idea that's the other direction okay north and then we know where the moon's supposed to be so we're getting an interesting uh, 3D image of something on that shot because that's not a flipping street light folks so let's this is pretty interesting let's pop this up to 200 take a look at that 
So, and as you can see, and I'll even probably be able to get that even more. So we're getting some interesting views, and it's nice to know that I basically should have went up here looking at Canada a long time ago. So you're getting a nice, interesting view tonight because basically we're just go back to uh, chart, and then we'll know that the idea of the moon is supposed to be in the east, and we'll go back, and we got the arrow that's north, and we know that. So the idea that we're getting an interesting uh, array off of Venus, more than likely, and Jupiter is the closest to it. So there's a good idea of Jupiter image and some 3D action from the moon and Jupiter. So pretty much what we've been seeing during the daytime sky towards the early morning, well in the dark over in Hawaii when we've seen Jupiter and moon doing its thing over there. So right now all year pretty much the later part of the fall and the winter here we've been seeing Jupiter and the moon doing some interesting stuff. You get some interesting views because that is live tonight. Okay and then in different areas you get that the view there from that camera on the moon and remember watch the arrow that means north okay so that is the moon there that's the moon there and that's not the moon there that's a reflection of Jupiter because it's the closest thing to the moon okay so you get a 3d image of Jupiter off of the illumination of the moon so there's still 800 pounds of rocks missing off of the Apollo and all that stuff like that so there's only been a certain amount of weight that's been put up with all the space shuttles too, so it's pretty interesting to find out w if there was ever even 800 pounds of rocks or where the hell they're at, because there's moon rocks missing, and then we know the luminosity, so somebody's got a lot of tracks to cover, so, because we know that that is not, it is a reflection of Jupiter in the moon, so that's basically Jupiter right there, so get an interesting the idea that you can see a dark band on Jupiter right now so they might be having some more storm action up around and I think Jupiter's the one that's got that reddish cloud mark on it and we've also seen that on another planet I think of late too like on Saturn or something like that so but that should be Jupiter getting a nice 3d image holograph of it from the moon tonight on the Canadian and let's look at, see if I can get time for Asgard and yes folks more than likely we probably caught uh, Jupiter right here and I'll pop back down because basically we should be at a little bit smaller than that looking at this map have some fun people playing fun fun with this I actually I think I popped in on the screen and we're still at but see this I, this is a good I'll get you a better shot maybe I actually have my friends help me out here because the idea that we more than likely on that one video just before this we were wondering what that planet was that I zoomed in on the shot because basically that one might have been Jupiter and that's why I was wondering it was so damn big Okay, because Stereo B, as you see, is the blue, and it's behind, and that's what that shot was from. And we blew up, and I found it in the corner. As you see, it's just it moves back towards the camera at a certain part of the day. Then it caught that onto the corner of whatever you've seen that CME action of the last video that I have had up. So it was Venus, and that was huge. But the idea to remember that why does all these other huge uh, planets that it's seeing over here? Okay, because all these are satellites folks okay and they don't show up big like that okay so it's not the satellites you're seeing like I said so this is our retina in earth going through space ladies and gentlemen yes and we have protection layers all the way out here like this okay so we had something pushed down on us pretty hard and probably most likely it was that that uh, Kepler 30 whatever the heck it was okay now this is the satellites that go around and give us the readings this is this the Sun side of the earth and the idea that you have to keep an eye on this retina as the idea that stuff CME action this is all CME action out here and it pushes down on us as we go through space fast and you will see the CME action in the big push down because you will see some b very bright back here heat behind us earth as our stratospheres and basically I've given you information on that when you see the stuff I've seen on the airplanes so I've gave you the data at the very end of the video Let's see if I can find which one that was real fast because I show you the data of our stratosphere hemisphere stratosphere there's all kinds of spheres that we have okay so there's you get that energy on the back side of the earth as we're going through and we're moving away from the Sun again real fast right now okay so we're actually moving backwards might be creating some heat also it's just but we should be rotating so we're rifling like a bullet around in space ladies and gentlemen and this is our retina of our protection of our atmosphere okay and basically it gets down to that small there but we have a lot more than what we know that we have way the hell out here outside of okay only NASA knows about that stuff getting a rocket up into space 
It'd be interesting what NASA's not telling us, folks, because we know we found this Oort cloud on the, what I showed you, the footage from International Space Station. This is its Oort cloud right there. And you'll see this interesting finds again. It's being a lot.